Okay, I want to talk about the day of the funeral. And usually when I do the funeral with these relatives, when they come over and bring their tobacco asking me to do the funeral, I usually provide them with a list of things that need to be put in order before we have the funeral. So most of the time, the family has all, all the things that we need to prepare the, the deceased for their journey. Very first thing we have to we put on them. We usually come in. Usually our shkabeusag, or shkabeus comes in early to prepare the body. If it's a male, if it's a woman, we have uh, I have some women helpers who come in and prepare the the female for that for that journey. And the very first thing we have to have on them is moccasins. Put the moccasins on them. From there, you put a quilt to cover them from the waist down. And then from there, you put uh, tobacco. Plug tobacco in their fingers, three in the right, two in the left. There's five pieces of tobacco. Because as they eat, go on that journey and go down that path, they're going to see four money dug as they go along. And then the fifth tobacco is uh, when they are going along that path, they're going to come upon a river that's over there. And there is a manidu that's lying in that river, and that river is swift, and that manidu is moving like that river is. And when they use that tobacco over there, that's why I tell them that, you know, even as the Anishinaabe uses their tobacco over here, they're helped. And they take that fifth piece of tobacco, put it down, and that manadu lies still that's in the river and it allows that spirit of that individual to cross and climb over its back and cross that river. And when they have crossed that river, then they're close to that place where our people go in the west. So. So some of this, I'm, you know, in covering this part of a, the journey or the prep, I might forget. We do have a book that we have done, and it will be published shortly, covering all aspects of the funeral. So if you want to get a good understanding of this, let's go out and pick up that book. It'll be published shortly, hopefully. Anyway, when um, as they're um, preparing the body, also along with that, they also want to make sure that they have a bundle, the bundle under the casket. That's where um, they put in four change of outfits for the individual, um, a towel and a washcloth, and tobacco. And that is a bundle that's given out to either a drum keeper or individual that can fit that clothing. And also viewing, you're told um, to take your glasses off when you come up to view the deceased. Um, you're relating to that individual on the spirit to spirit level. And they're always uh, the teaching that there's a glare in those glasses. So that's why you have to take them off. Also, when you go up to view, you want to be sure that tears or water from your nose does not fall on the body as you view it. If that happens, that individual has a, the spirit of that individual has a hard time leaving and there's like a mist on that path. Um, also not to put tobacco on the body. Um, also any articles you want to put in the casket to, for that spirit to take with them, you have to give it to Urshkabeus first and make sure that he, he can check what's being put in there. One of the things we're told is not to overload the spirit of that individual. They want to have a easy time on their, their journey, not be loaded down with things. 
also the thing that people, Anishinaabe without knowing, sometimes we want to put crosses in there, uh, in with the body, and that's a no-no. We cannot blend Christianity in a traditional ways, particularly in this ceremony, something like that could block the journey of our our relative of going where our people go. So I want to make sure you do that. Run it past the Ishkabewas. Um, viewing also, I get really bothered when people seem to stand up there too long and view the body. It's like they're holding on to that individual, but the spirit of that individual. Long time ago, people were not up to, were, didn't come up to view until the time of the actual fine, final viewing. So people want to remember that. I know myself personally, I wouldn't want to have people standing there staring at me. It's just a violation of my privacy. Um, also, we have other funerals, special funerals. Those for infants are done a little differently. One of the things I want to tell mothers or families is if you should lose your infant early in your pregnancy, you're in the hospital, you want to make sure you're um, at the hospital releases that little one to you and bring bring that little one home and then give it a tradition give that little one a traditional funeral. It's hard telling what those what those hospitals or doctors will do to that little one. Sometimes they cut those little infants up in the name of research or maybe even outright discard them in the garbage. A lot of our our hospital people have no respect for the spirit of a lot of these little infants. You hear about a lot of our Anishinaabe people or people hearing in general. You can hear infants crying at night. That is those infants that haven't gone anywhere, haven't been sent anywhere, so they're just wandering in the the earth aimlessly. So you want to make sure you do a funeral. For those little ones, and um, there is a money due over there in the west, in that place where our people go that takes care of our people. He has a money due that helps them, that takes care of these infants, and her name is Kagageshkini Kwe, Everlasting Young Woman. I had done a funeral over in Mille Lacs. Um, Near their, where their casino was, there was an old schoolhouse there. And I did one of these funerals for an infant, and my mother told me at the night of the wake, she saw that woman come in that gagagishkini koi. She said she looked to be about 20 years old, and she had long, real long hair down to her butt. And I saw her looking at my baby, and I could see the love in her eyes, and I could see my baby's love in the eyes for her. And she said, the funeral wasn't hard for me after that. And she told me later, she said, you know, I realized uh, I carried my little one for those manidug. Because our, te our teaching is the reason those little infants go straight over there where our people go instead of stopping here on earth. It's because those money do see something desirable in that baby. And when that baby gets over there where our people are, would be rewarded with whatever it was. It was meant for them. So that's why they go straight over there. And then the other thing that's different about these funerals also we don't have to wait the four nights. Uh, usually that's, a spirit is held, held over four nights and there are those four nights they revisit every place where they had been while they were on this earth. This is not the case with these infants, so can do those funerals immediately. And usually they're done in the house or the home 
of the family. Um, and also the other thing is that they also don't eat with that infant. They haven't gotten, gotten to that point where they accept food. That impression of their spirit hasn't made it to the earth. So the food that's brought in, I usually just send it out to those Manidug in general and asking uh, that the family and the infant be helped. And also when it comes to toddlers, with them they see the spiritual energy that's sent over from over there. And it comes in the form of a ball. That's what they see. And those little toddlers, when it's time for them to change worlds, it is that ball that they follow down that path that helps them reach over there where people go. And the others, so. Uh, the younger ones, the infants, are carried by that woman, Nagaga Geish Kanikwe. She's the one that carries them all the way down that path until they reach over there where our people go. Um, then there's also, um, some of our people can be sent out with the use of a water drum and rattled or rattles. Usually the way our people are sent out who are midday and they call that Sagima Ja and Awiya. That's translation as close as I can figure out is sent out in a loving way. Um, my auntie had lost a, a namesake of hers and she had told me, gave me specific instructions to send her out this way using a, a water drum and a rattle. So that's what I did. So this happens, you don't have to be midday in order to be sent out with the use of a water drum. But we also but we also have our midday people who are too are sent out the use of the water drum and the rattles. And the hide is brought in according to the hide they were given the last time they went to the midday lodge. And that is used and somebody comes in and dances with that hide. And that'll help them on their journey. And for those who are Zonga Midday Wijik, fourth degree, um, when they're sent out, some of me can send the pipe with them, can also send their pelts with them, or anybody at Midday can really send, send it with them. Um, the reason I say this is when, uh, right around the 50s, when they dug up a lot of the graves in Mille Lacs, most of those graves, so as they came up with these animal hides, which tells me that our people were buried with them long ago, and we can continue to bury them with their midday hides. It, that's a hide they were given as they went through the Midday Lodge. Also, they put a megas in their hand. And the other thing we, what you do with fourth degree people is you put rouge on their face, rouge on their cheeks, rouge on their forehead to prepare them for their journey. Um, we do not blend Christian or traditional ways. It has to be one or the other. Um, if you bring anything Christian related into a traditional friend or you're going to block the journey of that individual. So it's important we start on time when we do these funerals. Our old man said, the spirits of our people are in a rush to leave at that time. So we're not doing them right by Arriving late, so we should try to be on time. Um, and as I said, there are money due gone away. 
and um, and including that river where those five pieces of tobacco go. One of the things that we're told, <clears throat> you tell the spirit once they have crossed that river over there is, when you cross, make sure you don't look back. When you go down that path, you're always told, don't, don't look back. If you were to look back, you would see how ferocious looking that money do was that allowed you to cross that river. There's no way you can come back. But don't let that bother you. Just remember, this is a beautiful place you're going to. And you need to accept what those money do decide that was time for you to change worlds at this time. So that kind of briefly or summarizes the journey that our people take when they leave this world. Um, like I said earlier, we have a book that lays out in, in more detail this journey that our people go on when they leave this world. But one of the things I wanted to talk about is that each one of us, the money do decide when we have to make this journey. There's a date and time they set. And in the meantime, we're told not to waste our life. Each one of us have been put on this earth for a reason. There is something to, that we are to accomplish while we are here on this earth. And the reason I remember that so well is in my earlier days, in my drinking days. In my crazy days, those people that raised me always reminded me. You were not put on this earth to waste away on and, and drinking and drugging. So while you're on this earth, do what it is those money do wanted you to do. And I always, I always think when you do that, it must be a wonderful feeling when you go down that path and realized, hey, I did what those money do wanted me to do while I was on earth. And to me, that's Anishinaabe success. That's what we all have to strive for. Don't waste that precious life we have been given.